Okay, let's begin. Hopefully everything is working alright. I'm up at the top of the screen now. It's getting bored at the bottom. Let me just turn the music ever so slightly down. In fact, let me turn the audio ducking back on for it. So yeah, I've done some changes as you can probably tell. Um, to do this now. Some changes to update the uh, the SID requested to work a little bit better um, and change my overlay as well. So hopefully it should go quiet when I talk. Yeah it does. That's probably better, I think. Okay, and I can turn the docking off if I need to as well. Uh, so now we've got... Um, I feel like that's still too much. Okay. So now we've got proper requester in the... Um, in, in, the, in, the, in the playing title and in the queue list at the bottom as well. So who've we got here then? We've got Akamafin, Andy Magic Knight, Old School Kodo, Mad Beagle, Mad Zed, uh, Proud Seven, Steps, uh, Crazy UK, uh, Prince Phase, DMX, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Hi everybody. I've increased the price slightly to 100, so we'll see how it goes on, on the stream. Um, but yeah, I just I need I wanted a better overlay, so I spent today working. Um, uh, in between doing my work, actually drawing an overlay and coding it to be one thing, so it's actually one just one big JavaScript page now uh, with some holes in it for cameras and stuff. Hey Jamie30DBS, welcome to the stream dude. Hayes can't troll with a SID request anymore. He can he can make SID well SID requests will always eat your eat your points now um, automatically and there's no voice announcement now so so no he can't not properly anyway just easier to manage like this. Uh, okay, cool. Right, so what I was going to do tonight is um, go through Charpad because I know it's a topic that, that's come up a lot. I know Old School Coda did one um, not long ago uh, on it, uh, but I thought we'd touch on it as well. Um, just to explain the file format that Charpad spits out. Um, and to try and probably make um, it's a long way from my eyes from the bottom of chat to Shallon's head <laughs> make you work you want to look at me you've got to work um, I thought we'd try and make a library that's more um, flexible if you like <laughs> thanks H, thanks for the 100 bits. He's still got, he can still use bits to troll, which is fine. He's paying for the privilege, so. Let's turn the alerts up a little bit. Okay, and just drinking Sprite tonight, nice and simple. Alright, music's down a bit, alerts are up a bit. There we go. Okay, 
okay I hope hopefully that's all right I've, I've got audio ducking on so hopefully my voice should should overcome it um, and alerts are a bit higher now as well so <laughs> Data the chart packed over from his June to low loads in different maps. Yeah, yeah, I realize that this is kind of a bit of an overlap with what old school Coder has done, but it's, um, I think it's worth going through as well. Just it's one of those topics that, that comes up a lot, and I think the more sources people have got to kind of figure this out, the better. Um, so it may be that uh, they can figure out with old school coders code, they may be able to figure out with just mine, they may only be able to figure out using both. So um, the more, the more, the merrier, I'd say. Pardon me. So first of all, let's let's compare the two versions of Charpad uh, and why I think uh, it's a good idea to use the second one, the the paid version. So this is the free version. I don't know how up to date that is. And this one here is the uh, Thalamus edition Deploy version. In my robot. Uh, thanks for the host in there. So let's just let's just put some characters in here. So just, just do the amount of white button, just any any old crap will do. So the first difference between the two is um, you, you'll notice this red and yellow mark on here. Uh, and what they are is it's a way for you to define what each of the mouse buttons do. So if you press the right mouse button, it, and the new one is this one, you press the life, left mouse button does this, and this basically just says what the left and, mouse, left and right mouse button draw. So you can draw different things with left and right mouse button. Whereas on this version, left mouse button is always the one you've got selected, and right mouse button is always going to be this character here, always character zero. So that's a handy nice feature if you're, if you're drawing some stuff. Lag test. How how bad is your lag then tonight, Andy? Uh, the other thing that's worth knowing as well is you've got this key map, which is something that's new to the new one. This allows you to actually uh, type some stuff. If I uh, let me open an existing project, so. Sorry, we go to Put some fonts first. There's got to be some fonts in here somewhere. No, ah, let's go fonts. So what you can do with key map is once you've got um, selected, you can you can just type. Well, you should be able to just type. Um, if you select the select the text entry here, you can type uh, on here. You should be able to. I need to pick the right key map, I think. Yeah. Why is it not working? I never remember which one it is. Maybe it's Pesky. C61. There we go. So yeah, if you if you pick, depending on where your characters are in the character set, then you need to pick a different one of these. With your letters at the beginning, you pick uh, C64 on mixed, and then you can just press anywhere on the screen, and you can you can type, which is a lot easier than trying to do it on here, where you'd have to actually place individual letters. So that's a nice feature as well. Um, but the main feature and the reason why I definitely recommend using uh, this one is you have a thing called FlexiGrid. So say I want to draw, say I want four screens. Um, I might do something like this. So now I have a map that's 80, 80 across by 50 down. So it's four individual screens. Now on this version, you would have to export that as one big map and either process it yourself into individual screens or write a piece of code to do it. We'll, we will write um, a piece of code in here, hopefully, if everything 
um, if everything works okay um, with the code, we'll, we'll we'll put something in here which will deal with this multi map. However, if you're in if you're in this mode in the uh, in the new chart pad, what you can do uh, if you go into flexi grid settings, you can set your your screen width in terms of tiles. I mean, we're not using tiles at the moment, so forty by twenty five should be fine. Uh, char cells. It doesn't matter how you set up. And basically, this will create a grid if I turn it on. View. This is a flexi grid now. Where the button is. Is it that one there? Yeah, I got a flexi grid on and off. And you can see, so this, this extra button here turns the bigger grid on, and you can see the screens as individual. Uh, well, not individual, but separate like this. And then when you export, Export flexi gridded sub maps. So if I export that, uh, let's just do a demonstration. So if I go and grab, oh, you can see there. There you go. It creates uh, it creates four individual maps then, uh, one for each screen. So that's why that's really really useful. Um, before we go into the code behind how to make these display, I want to go through the different files um, and, and explain what they're doing. So we'll work with the normal char pad, but just just to know, it's definitely worth getting the, the latest version of the uh, the paid version because it also gives you this version of uh, Sprite Pad as well, uh, which is a much much nicer um, version of Sprite Pad, uh, actually based heavily on char pad. Um, but it's it's just it's just a bit easier to use than the other one. It also lets you do uh, tiles as well. So if you want to create uh, big sprites, you can create um, sprites that are larger. Yeah, so if you want to do bosses or something like that, you can quite easily do some boss sprites uh, by, by building a four by four block. So it's kind of kind of cool. So. Uh, I love the new SIDs, they're great, but also kind of boring. Yeah, I find that as well. I do. I find I do prefer the the more kind of the gamey SIDs rather than the demo ones. There's some really good demos, demo SIDs, but... Okay. Um, all right, let's let's go into the the char pad files themselves. So we'll work with this one, uh, and we'll go through each of the the file exports. So I'm going to import. Um, in fact, I'm just going to open. Uh, what shall I open? Let's let's actually let's try and find. Um, an example that's already 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 made for us. It's probably the easiest way to deal with this. Let's go for one of Saul's things. Let's uh, look at it more. There we go. So you see a few different screens on here. So I'm just going to reduce it down to uh, down to one screen first. Uh, We'll, we'll work with it's like, no, let's not let's go and this will be 20 there we go Bye. there we go and let's have a look at the different outputs from here so I'm gonna delete what's in that folder so you can see them all Until I've just woken up, just my head's not with it at all. <laughs> scene SIDs are a work of art and tech. Yeah, exactly. I, I think scene SIDs are made to show off what people can do with the SID, whereas game SIDs are built to be catchy and um, kind of 
themistic, theme, thematic, themistic, thematic. Yeah. Okay, so, so here we've got we've got loads of stuff in here. So this is a typical workflow for for a game. Uh, you've got your main map, which consists of tiles. We've got tile mode uh, turned on here. Uh, we have per character colouring. We'll go through the different colouring methods in a minute. Um, um, we have a tile set. Tile sets generally can be as, as small or um, large as you want them to be. There, there isn't a kind of upper limit on these. Character sets tend to be 256 characters or less. This one is a few characters less. Um, and then your characters here. So when you export, these are the options we get in here. So we get export character set, character set attributes, tile set, tile set attributes, which is grayed out, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, and map. So let, let's start with the character set because that's the simple one. So I just always call it charts, but call it whatever you want to call it. Really, just doesn't, doesn't matter. And I don't know where the hell that just exported to. So I'm going to do it again. I exported that into the examples folder. Okay. Just get for being half asleep. So a character set. Character set is we've gone through this before. Each character. Um, looks like this. It's uh, it's eight by eight pixels. Um, if you're in multicolor mode, it's it's four by eight pixels. But each pixel is square. It actually takes up two bits. Um, it's represented in memory as as eight bytes. Each byte being a row. Um, so if a pixel is on, it's one. If a pixel is off, it's zero. So character is just eight bytes represented by the the bits that are turned on and off in there. Um, so character set, full character set when it's 256 instead of 234, um, which is the, the most you can get in a single character set, um, will take up uh, two kilobytes in memory. Uh, so it's 256, lots of eight bytes. And these are all sequential. So, so starting at the first character, this is the first byte, second byte, third, fourth, and so on, and then and then on to the next one, and, and so on and so on. It goes from... Um, left to right top to bottom in this list same inside it goes from left to right top well top to bottom because it's just individual you know this is oh my god all, all the colors one there you go so that's that's one byte that's the second byte that's the third byte it's a fourth byte fifth and so on so characters are really easy and i think everybody's fairly familiar with them we've gone over these quite a lot so Yeah, same format as, uh, as the Commodore 64 jar set, yeah. Um, but it's just, it's just worth kind of explaining um, what how these are kind of laid out in memory. Because um, people might not even know how the um, how the, uh, the the character ROM actually works anyway. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the first export, and that's quite a simple one. Uh, then you've got the character set attributes. So this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, for Arc... For uh, or Arxy. Welcome to the stream, dude. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the host as well, Andy. I missed that. And thank you for the bits. It's all digital as well. Thank you very much, dude. Is it always better to create single screen maps or can you create a map with several screens horizontally in them? I have a map with two screens in a map. It's it's entirely up to you how you do it. Um, if you are going to create one with multiple screens in a map, then you're better off using the new char pad. But if you don't want to use the new char pad for whatever reason, um, I'll show you how to how to make it work with, with more than one screen. Um, my personal opinion would be uh, don't do it in code. Uh, do it with a script that you run on on the map afterwards. Uh, but I'll show you how to do it in the code anyway. So we're going to export the character set attributes now, um, and you'll see. I'm going to load these into uh, to this, so you can actually see it in the in the hex editor. Okay. So what we're seeing here is. A full child one byte for each character in the char set and each each byte represents the attributes for this character now for the most part you will use this for colors um, and that's the lower nibble here so you can see here this the color of this one is pink the color of this one is light green and you can see in here 
the lower nibble is A, which is pink, the lower nibble, and the next one is D, which is light green. But there's also this upper nibble as well, and the upper nibble is the materials. Now it's up to you how you use the materials. Uh, thanks for the follow, Fair and River. Welcome to the stream. It's up to you how you use the materials. Um, they tend to be used. Um, uh, where is the material view? Here we go. They tend to be used as collision, um, but you can use them for whatever you really want to do. It's just a way of attaching uh, another uh, four-bit number to um, to each character. And the reason this works is because colors only use the lower nibble, so so you can use this upper nibble to store some extra information. Um, how you store the information is up to you. You've got uh, you can put any number from zero to fifteen in there. Um, I tend to do it um, with uh, individual bits being um, properties. So the first bit might be whether or not it's solid. The second bit might be whether or not it kills you, uh, things like that. But you don't have to do it that way. You can just have a list of fifteen types as well. So however you store that is entirely up to you. Um, but this is the end result: is you get a single byte for each character in order again left to right, top to bottom, um, with the upper nibble being the materials, which are here. Uh, they don't do anything in Charpad other than set these numbers when you turn material mode on. Um, but it's worth it's worth knowing um, what it's doing, and you will probably use it for something. Um... Uh, Write a Node.js script to do write a Python script. To do. Well, either of those are perfect uh, for doing this sort of thing. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to. I'm going to try and build this um, a map loader to have a few constants at the top that we can change, uh, and they will have an effect on how the map is read all the way down. How does the collision data work? Um, well, I mean. <sighs> I won't be going through that in detail on this stream, but basically when um, you'll see when we when we load the map in and you can load the colors in, um, we, we do a lookup for each color for each character that we put on screen. You can also look up that collision data as well. Can you make the hex editor bigger? I'm not sure if it'll go any. Uh, I think I need to change the font in it. Uh, hang on, let's see. Appearance. Oh, I can make it bigger. That's cool. Um, but I think we might do, I, th I think we probably do something detailed on collision at some point, but it's probably a bit too much for this one at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, the collision data is just some extra information. So in your, in your collision routine, when you're checking what characters you're touching around your sprite, you can read some information about them as well. So you can say, okay, the, the character that's underneath my feet has a material of one. Uh, I know anything that's a material of one is solid. Um, and you can see on here, if I turn the materials on in the map view, you can see indeed everything that's got a one in it is solid in here. There's a six in here, which I don't know what that, that thing does, but it looks like it's a door of some kind. Um, so yeah, by, by using different materials, you can kind of, you can pass extra information to your routines. So, so that's the that's the color export. That's quite a simple one. Um, then there is uh, tile sets. So let's export a tile set. Um, did I export that? I did. There we go. Okay. So this is tiles. So tiles gets. This is where it starts getting a little. Yeah, start having to think because this is now we're using stuff that's very specific to to Charpad's layout. I mean, tile tile formats are kind of pretty much the same across all games, but you do need to understand how they work. So, so this is a tile here. Uh, we bring up the tile view, um, but it's unfortunately the thing with Charpad is it for some reason puts the tile editor all the way down there, and I don't know why. Uh, bit of Mario cement factory there, cool. Okay, so this is our tile editor here. 
And so the way the tile format works is it goes through each tile and it reads the tile set from same again, left to right, top to bottom. So this is tile zero, this is tile one. You can see the number down here. Oh, it says ready at the moment, but when I hover over it, you can see they, they read in order like this. And then inside each tile, you have a number of characters depending on what size you set. So these are two by two tiles. So there's there's two across, two down, and it reads these left to right, top to bottom. So you can see for each tile, there's going to be four bytes, one for each of these. So this would be byte zero, this would be byte one, byte two, and byte three. Um, and then it would move on to the next. This would be byte zero, byte one, byte two, byte three. And so you can see in the tile data here, we've got first tile here is this these four we put air more fun requested by old school coder <laughs> what happened to cam focus is the cam going weird yeah I don't know um, yeah so the first four bytes are going to be the first tile, and this is saying that we've got char zero in all these four locations, which is this one here. Then the next tile has got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can see it there, and so on and so on. And it just goes through the entire tile list looking this. So if we want to know what tile um, this one is, tile 17, actually let's make this, there we go. Uh, let's have a look at this one, tile 80. So tile 80 will be 80 times 4 bytes along, so that's 320. So that's 140. Uh, is it 140? Yeah, this one here. So it's this one here. So this is tile 80. 78, 79, 78, 8, 7, B. Which are these, these ones here. Um, trying to work out what that is in there, I think it's these ones. No, 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 those ones, there you go. So it's that, then that, then that, then that, and that's defined in this tile list. And we've used that in the code, so whenever we're looking up a tile, we're going to multiply um, the start address of the tiles, uh, sorry, the tile number by the size of the tiles and add the start address of the tiles. Again, we'll go through this um, in some detail soon. You might have some, um, can I out of focus, that's all. Uh, you might have uh, bitrate issues or something. Uh, it should be streaming in 1080p, so. Uh, this is XVI32, this is, um, it's just one I've used for years and years and years, so. Um. <laughs> I'm getting blurry, but that's normal. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm getting blurry. I haven't made changed any settings on the camera. I've just moved it along a bit. Actually, it looks a bit... The frame rate looks a bit funny on it. Hmm. Strange. So that's the tile data. Uh, and then map data is pretty much the same as well. So if we if we export the map data, Okay, so this is the map data. So the map data again follows the same pattern. It goes from left to right, top to bottom. Let's just turn materials off for a second. Uh, so our map is built up of tiles. So it's built up of these things, uh, which means to fill the screen horizontally, we need 20 tiles because each tile is two bytes wide and the screen is 40 wide. And uh, Labby's maps are 11 tiles high, so they're 22 tiles high. So our map data is 220 bytes long. And each map uh, each byte is just f reading from left to right top to bottom a tile number so you can see the first tile is tile 0b which is this one here second tile is 1a which is going to be uh, this one here and then 25 which is that one and so on and so on and it just reads 
all the way through the map. Top to, to uh, left to right, top to bottom. So, what does that mean when we want to... Oh, I'll explain one other thing as well while I'm at it. Um, so there is an option that's greyed out here. And this is tile set attributes. Now the reason that's greyed out is because of this. You have a colouring method here. So if I click per tile, and now our colours are based on, on tiles, not characters. So if I go into an individual character here, um, I'm actually changing every character's colour here. You notice how I'm not changing any of the tiles, and that's because actually the colours are based on tiles instead. So you pick a tile, you pick its colour, and it's called um, a per tile colouring. This is more important if you're doing scrollers. If you're not doing a scroller, then you may as well just go full colour. Um, but essentially, what that means is when you uh, export tile set attributes, uh, you see this is now now appears here. Uh, let's open that up as well in here. And you can see now the colours apply to um, in order again reading from left to right top to bottom uh, so first tile is color OC second tile is O2 the red OB the gray O6 the blue and so on and so on so it allows you to to store uh, colors on a per tile basis it's only really useful um, how the search find that I don't know did he find it that's impressive I'm, I'm kind of pleased actually because I did spend a lot of time making the fuzzy search algorithm as accurate as I could to try and reduce the, the number of results down to a single tune, a single best match tune. It was not, not an easy feat to say the least. So yeah, that's that's per, per tile colouring. Um, I'm going to Turn that off though, I, I don't like the tile colouring. Um, it's only really useful if you're doing scrollers and you're trying to be a bit more um, efficient with the, uh, the colour scroll code. Uh, it's really not necessary in, in normal mode, so... Unfortunately I've coloured some things now incorrectly, but... Um, actually, let me just reload the map. Oh, this sounds like Arkanoid or something. Oh no, it's Ocean Loader. So let's put this back to the size and height I wanted. That's the point. Uh, the only other option I should probably... Two, well, two options I should probably tell you about here is uh, multicolor mode basically just turns everything into multicolor mode um, it's it's basically um, all, all it does is it changes your view of it um, you still have to set um, char colors individually per char multicolors and transparent colors are never saved in any of the map data anyway um, but this is if you do want to do multicolor map obviously you need to do your designing in multicolor mode uh, Lavi de Moore is done in um, high res mode, so we don't, we don't need that at the moment. And the other one is tile system as well. So if you disable the tile system, um, it basically just it creates maps that are just single characters and gets with your tile map, so you don't have a tile map anymore. Um, oh god, I've just deleted it again, haven't I? <laughs> Let's let's go through how we would get this map onto the screen. Um, so we'll keep it open in here so we can see, but we've got all the files exported in here as well. I'm going to remove uh, the tile attribute one because we don't need it. Uh, new file. I'm going to call. In fact, I'm going to call it Map Loader by ASM. So it's going to be. I think it's going to be fairly general. I will create a separate file called start.asm. Should probably put the stuff in folders as well, so I'll go and do that now.
So let's make a simple basic entry point here. And we're going to import the map loader as well. Uh, we'll use code in. So I'm, I'm going to try and keep the map loader code separate from the uh, from the intro code just to ensure it works properly. So I'm just going to do my usual where I, I just turn the kernel and the interrupts off. Um, I, I don't really need to do this for, for this, I don't think, but I, I think it's good that you see me doing this all the time, um, just so you get used to seeing it and you understand what it is. You don't have to think about it then, it just becomes second nature, hopefully. Let's do that as a local label. So this is our very very basic setup. Um, we're going to load some, some character sets in and stuff as well and we're going to set those. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to have a character set. Um, it's kind of a little bit beyond the scope of um, of, of this um, uh, this tutorial because really I just want to show you how, how to load the data in but I'll, I'll, I'll do a little explanation as we go along. So I'm going to put the character set at uh, 2000 um, I'm going to keep my screen at 0400 uh, and I'm going to import all the, all the map data around about this area. Um, so I'm going to import the character set here. It's, it's going to be maps. And then I've got some extra data as well. So I, I'm actually going to, even though this will be sequential in memory, I'm going to... Um, actually put actually it might not be sequential because I think it was less than 256 characters so uh, so I'm going to import the colors here as well what else did we have I like this tube it reminds me of Halloween but oh that's made me want to request a tune actually The right one, yeah. Uh, so we're going to import the tiles next into this location here. Oh my god. Yes, apparently it does. <laughs> uh, okay, I just want to have a look at how much tiles. So we've got 243 tiles, 4 bytes each. Um, so that will fit nice and neatly uh, into this area. Uh, and I'm going to put the map up at 3000. Um, just for simplicity's sake. Um, just makes it easy to go and find in memory. Okay, they're the four things we need, so they're going to be imported now. Uh, so the only other thing we need to do now is we need to actually set some colours and uh, some, some um, pointers into memory, to uh, pointers for the VIC to tell it where to find these files. So. We're not going to change the VIC bank, we're going to remain in the same VIC bank we're in, so we don't need to change that value. Uh, but we will need to change the value in D018. So we're going to be pointing to the same screen RAM, um, but we're going to be pointing to a different character set ROM. Um, so I've, I've done this before, but I'll, I'll very, very briefly uh, explain what we're doing here. So if you look in a memory map, you'll see this sort of thing. Um, D018 contains two pointers, one for screen RAM and one for character memory, um, depending on which mode you're in. in. In standard kind of text mode, though, it's pointing to character memory uh, and screen memory. So the lower four bits 
point to character memory. Uh, actually, it's 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 the lower four bits like this, but actually the last bit can be anything. It can be zero or one. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then basically it goes, it just counts up. So uh, if the screen was at zero, it would be this. If the screen is at zero four hundred, it would be this. If it's at zero eight hundred, uh, it would be this. Uh, and so on, and you just count up. And we want it at 0400, so we're just going to leave it as it is. This is the default. Um, this is what we're going to leave it as. Then the top four bytes point to where the. Um... Sorry, no, that's the character memory. This is the top four bytes. Sorry, that's correct. So the top four bits, sorry, are the character, uh, are the screen memory. It's the lower four bits that are the character memory. Right, let me clarify. I think I've confused myself there. The top four bits, bits four to seven, are the screen RAM, and they're referenced like this. So actually, this is wrong. This should be like that, uh, and we can see that here. Zero zero one is at 0400, and it's the lower four bits that point to screen, uh, point to character memory. Uh, we want 2000, so that's 100. So we put 100 in, and the last bit doesn't matter. There we go. So I don't like keep explaining that, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the resub haze, by the way. I don't know if I just said that, but thank you very much anyway. Um, Ten months, man. Cool. Uh, and where to go with the text to speech as well? Unfortunately, I have no, I have no control over the text to speech in, um, in Streamlabs. I don't think so. But I don't mind. You, you, you bring enjoyment to the stream with your crazy text to speech stuff. So it's all good. But yeah, thank you for the resub, dude. Appreciated. Cool. So we, we've set a black background, we've set a screen color, um, and we've loaded some stuff in. So we can load this up now. It's not going to do very much. Um, how's that not working? Why is that working? Oh, because it's, it's just wrong. That's why. Okay. So I'm going to create a, a namespace here. It's going to call it black load. Say namespace. It's just a it's just blocks as a named kind of block basically. Um, it just makes it easy for for loading these things in. So there you go. And you can see we've still got the original um, C sixty four screen loaded in, but now it's using a different font set. So that's good. Will this be on the test? Will what be on the test? Getting getting it getting this bit wrong? No. <laughs> no, no, no. How's the uh, how's the queue thing looking? Is it working all right? Yeah, it looks like it. Actually, that's pretty good. I like that. Oh, this driller tune is really good, though. Gotta say. Okay, so let's let's draw a map. So the way I like to think about drawing a map is we're going to go through it in uh, in sections. So. I'm just, I'm just going to jump to a function in here. I'm just going to call it draw map, um, and we'll we'll go through it bit by bit, and work our way backwards from drawing a single uh, tile piece onto the screen to drawing a whole tile on the screen, drawing a row, and then drawing all the columns as well. I'm going to put some virtual memory up here as well. we will need some zero page stuff as well okay so in order to draw a map we need to know a few things so first of all we need to know and I, this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the constants at the top here um, actually I'm, I'm still gonna call them label because I hate the way it can part. actually no they're outside just fine okay. um, so the first constant we need to know is um, where the map itself is We'll call that map data, and we know that's at 3000, so that's where we imported it down here. Then the next thing we need to know is where the tile data is, and that's at 2900 because we imported that down here. Finally, we need to know 
uh, where the attribute data is. And that's at 2800. So that's this one here. Hey, Red Fox Creates, welcome to the stream. Uh... <laughs> Looks great, but I see I'm going to have to request a 20 minute tune just to have my nick <laughs> repeated over and over. <laughs> Yes. Um. Yeah, Andy's Andy's just desperate to spend all his points, I think. He's, he's got so many of them. The cool thing with this overlay is because it's um because it's all just one JavaScript page now, I can I can very easily add crap over the top that I can trigger from um, I can trigger from the uh, blah, blah, channel points. Um, so I'm, I'm considering putting some like um, the ways for you to change the color of the the tint of the background and stuff, and just some fun things for you to play with. Maybe some fireworks and stuff that you can trigger. Although it might get annoying for everybody else, so I'll have to work the points out. How's it going? It's going all right. We're, we're slowly working our way through this. I've explained the data a little bit now, so... Okay, so there's just to explain to Hayes, there's, there's a couple of ways you can search. Uh, so you can just do... Um, a single name search and it will try and find the best it will find the first and best match um, not always um, it's not always going to be um, the best thing for finding stuff uh, the, the second way is to just put a little bit more detail in so um, it's always good to put the uh, the artist and then the, the the tune in and that that tends to find them a little bit better or you can put a path in so you see the paths that um, when the queue comes along the bottom in this coming next queue at the bottom you'll see see that path there if you put that path in which you can find on deep sid um then it will do a path match and it will it will pick the best uh well it will pick the only one that's there basically so if you want to be absolutely sure go and find the path on deep sid um if you want to sub tune just put um at the end of your tune name put space hash and then the, the sub tune number from deep sid as well and it'll play that version Hey, for I welcome to the stream. Okay, so if we want to draw a map, we're going to have to draw tiles. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create another function here. I'm going to call it draw tile. It's pronounced path Phoenix P ha ha shalashi. What? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep the draw tile in, inside here. It might make it a macro or something, but it, it's, it'll be fine in here. So, in order to draw a tile, we need to know, uh, a, given a tile number, um, where the tile data is. So, so let's tile number in accumulating. So, say we have a tile number of. One zero. We need to know where that data is in this list. Now that's going to depend on the size of our map. So I'm going to put some extra constants in here. I'm going to have tile width. And that's going to be two for this particular map. And tile height. And then inside here, I'm actually so these are all the things that we're going to set outside. This is if you're if you're going to use this as a library, we'll set these values, and then internally it will work out some some values here. So the tile data length is going to be tile width times tile height. Can you donate points and not channel points? I don't think. You probably can with gamble points, but I'm not sure you can do it with channel points.
Holy shit, let's make a C64 game preview. Is, is seriously, is that already in there? Wow, okay. Oh, I mean, what can you do when they, they're doing stuff like that? That's crazy. So now what we need to do is we need to take our tile number and we need to multiply it by the tile data then. So this is where this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you know that your tiles are always going to be a power of two, then you can just do something like this to get the to get the offset. However, we don't know that. This I wanted this to be a general purpose thing, so I'm actually gonna um, I'm actually gonna put in a multiplication routine here as well. So what we need to do basically is we need to work out we need uh, tile number times tile data length plus tile data which will give us the actual location in memory. That's what we're trying to find out here. Uh, so we need a multiplication routine. I'm just going to look one up because I could probably do this, um, spend time working this out and I, I really can't be bothered doing this when I know there's going to be versions on here already. So uh, maths and algorithms, multiplication, uh, there we go. So I'm going to use this multiplication on here and we're just going to convert it for our own purposes. Multiplies number one by number two and stores result in accumulator, low byte, and Y, high byte. Okay. So let's put this in here. Let's call it multiply uh, X and Y get clobbered accumulator obviously gets clobbered as well but uh, num1 okay. num2 okay so let's put some some zero page stuff in here, so let's call this uh, let's do all about this map loader. Um, well, actually, we, don't, we can reuse this function, so I'm just going to call it multiply on one. How can we break a SID? It should be a command. Uh, uh, you can't, but I can. I have a. I I have a command to do that. Why? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I have. I'll show you my. Uh... I have my little panel in here, so I can I can skip things if I need to. this one All right, let's get this one oh no <laughs> oh my god oh this tune hurts my ears Okay, so we've got num1, num2. Hang on, multiplies num1 by num2, stores result in. Jesus Christ.
Wait, this is... None of this makes sense. This code doesn't make sense, right? Let's see if we can figure this out. What's this num one pi stuff here? Oh, okay, there's just there's just three values in here. Okay. I just need to put multiply in front of them. Okay. So I'm I'm cheating a little bit here because I don't want to make a an inefficient uh, routine to do this. I might as well use one that's been worked out to be fairly decent. So so we're going to use this routine to do it. Uh, this is going to take the numbers in num one and num two and multiply them. So we're going to take our tile number. And we're going to store that in num one uh, or multiply num one. Sorry. Uh, we're going to take our tile data length and store that in multiply num2 and then hopefully when we jump to this routine I did put a request limiter on as well because I had a feeling if I just let Hayes queue on on entertainer, entertainer or whatever it's called, a uh, hundred times, he would definitely do that. So, <laughs> so I put a one hour limit on it because somebody mentioned that. Um, so now you, you, once it's been requested, you can't request it again for another uh, another hour. Okay, so I'm going to use this now, and I'm just going to put a, a little break here. I just want to see if these values are right. So. Um, what we should see at this point when draw map is called is that the accumulator uh, source result in A and Y. Okay, so the accumulator should be 4, 0 and Y should be 0. So just want to see if that works. Uh, why is that not Oh, because I need to run it from this page. Uh, what? weird yeah, and yeah there you go accumulator four zero y zero zero so this this routine's working so this is basically uh i'll put a little note in here what this is doing so multiplies eight bit right eight bit uh, which is so 16 bit result in a y a byte cool all right i'm gonna go for a quick smoke when i come back we'll we'll carry on with the the rest of this so i'll be back in uh i need to get another drink as well i've gone through this really quickly uh i'll be back in uh about three or four minutes guys be right back Right, and I'm back. Oh, I missed my poltergeist tune. No mind. Okay, so this is this is giving us the right values here. So now in the accumulator we have the low byte, and in the Y register we have the high byte. So what we need to do now is we need to store them. So we're going to create. tile lookup word so this is just going to be our location in memory that we're going to grab the, the tile byte from so i've got message one sec <laughs> so 
So this is where we want to store the data. So we're going to store our low byte here. And we're going to store the high byte. Now, I'm going to assume that you keep your tile data um, aligned to zero, so I'm going to actually put these data constants should be aligned. Because then what I can do is this. There we go. We've got the we've got the tire lookup data now. All right, let me knock you down a little bit. There we go. How's that? Is that better? Pace is trying to sleep. So at this point now we have um, So the other thing we're going to need here is we're going to need uh, some offsets to screen offsets for things. So what we what, if we create a loop here Let's do it with why oh, like so. Okay. Oh, pardon me. So now if we load comma why we're now getting the tile data one byte at a time. So that, for now let's just put it into the screen here. And we'll see that we get the tile data just in a row as we go along, and then we'll 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 change that to actually work with uh, multiple rows. So what we're doing here is we're loading each each byte from that one tile and storing it to screen. Uh, we use the tile data length which has been calculated from here. So we're going to do four bytes, and we're going to store them to four positions on screen. So if I run this now, we should get single why is that not running yeah. there okay i mean it's it's kind of hard to tell because we've not we've got loads of crap all over the screen so let's just put a quick clear screen routine in here and we'll have This is going to clear all the sprite pointers as well, but for the purposes of this, it's absolutely fine. What's that come wrong? Okay, so that's probably not the best tile to show, so let's pick a tile that actually does look quite interesting. Let's do this one here. So this is tile 71, so let's, let's try that out. Um, so this is our tile number here. This is obviously going to be changed as we as we go on with the, the map drawing routine. I'm just going to dent this a little bit more, actually. So we put 71 in here, so that is uh, 4, 7. Hopefully we should see... parts that make up that tail but in a row. 
So you go, we've got the four pieces that make up that tail, it's worked out correctly where they are in the tarmac. Now the only problem is it's putting them all consecutively on here. So the next thing we need to do um, is create another pre-calculated thing here, um, which is going to be, uh, we'll call this uh, tile, uh, tile to screen sets. This is basically going to be a list of uh, a list of locations on the screen uh, where to draw based on the screen offset. Thank you for the follow, Al Alvator Anim Anonimo. Welcome to the stream, dude. Um, so let's let's just talk about what you would do in a two by two tile. Basically, your screen offsets would be zero so you put the first wherever you put the first byte zero the next byte would be one across and the next one would be on the next row and the next one will be on the next row and one across so that's what it would look like but we're going to try and calculate that um automatically so the way we're going to do that is we're going to um take uh our value which is going to be i here uh, we're going to divide that by 40 and get the remainder. That's going to give us 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, is that right? No, it's not. Because it should be doing it through tile width. That's not 40. There we go. So that'll give it 0, 1, 0, 1. Plus... Um, Uh, and this would be i divided by tar width. So we'll go, we'll go and have a look at that in memory to to make sure that's worked. But this should basically give us that that same thing. So what we're what we're looking for here is these values. Uh, but this should calculate those for us automatically. So let's give that a try. Let's do it in the debugger so I can actually see. Why is it not compiling? I've just realised I don't I have no idea where that is in memory, so let's, let's find it in here. Draw map. Make the thing a bit bigger. Because it's in a similar whatever. <laughs> whatever. Uh, let's find where that is in memory. It, here we go. So. Zero. Okay, so oh eight one zero is here, and we've got actually we've not got the right numbers at all. Let me just put um, let me just put a, a thing in here, just so I can see for sure that that's the right location. Because I don't feel like that's the right location. Oh wait, are we, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, I know why. I know what I've done wrong. Hang on. We need to times this bit by 28 because we need each row, so it needs to be going down a row at a time. So hopefully that should solve our issues. So let's go and have a look at the memory at 080E. Uh, we've got 0, 0, 1, 2, 8, 2, 9, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. So now we know that, and this is calculated ahead of time now, 
So again, all you need to change so far is these values here. Destroy him, my robot. Uh, thank you for the host, Ekmuffin. Appreciate it, dude. So now what we can do is we can um, uh, we can load X with tile to screen offsets comma Y and then store that at 0400 comma X. now we've got this working properly here and if it's a three by three tile it would draw a three by three tile and so on and this will work all the way up to uh six by six approximately uh well actually you do six by 16 or something it should be fine uh but six rows will be the most you can do with this method but six by six is pretty big for tiles and so probably won't be doing them that big anyway uh what mode is that in the C64 debugger? That is um, Control Shift F3. Oh, yeah, Control Shift F3. So as long as you've got your source mapping turned on, um, which I think is the VS files or the SIM files, I can't remember exactly which one it is. Uh, if you do Control Shift F3, you can see your code in here uh, and where it is in memory. So it's kind of useful. Okay, so we're not quite done with this yet because we want this value. This is probably going to be self-modified. The reason we, I want to use self-mod here is we could use zero page, but we're already using zero page Y to do this. So we'd have to kind of keep switching the Y value around. So it's easier just to use the X value here as well. Um, but there is one other thing we need to do first, which is we need to take uh, we need to take this value that we're going to store, uh, and we need to look up a color. So we're going to look up attribute data. We're going to transfer that back to the X register again. This is going to be quite inefficient, but for a single flick screen thing, it should be fine. Uh, so we're going to load our attribute data here. Then I'm going to load this value back again. We could probably store this somewhere so we don't have to do this twice. But to be honest, if we're only doing it twice, it's not going to make that much difference. Um, we're going to store that at some screen RAM location like so. And there we go we've got we've got the tile from in here displaying with the colors so that's just a single tile so to make this work with multiple tiles we need to do a few things first of all we need to be able to reposition uh the tile anywhere on the screen so these are going to become self mods so i'm going to put we'll call it screen mod color mod uh, and we'll change these values shortly. But in order to do that, we need to, first of all, uh, start a new kind of loop. So this is just drawing one tile. So we're going to go across and do the whole first row. So in order to do that, we need to know where the map data is. And the map data is going to start here. So that's kind of nice and simple. Um, and we'll do the same. Uh, we'll have a zero page for this. So we'll have a map loader. Uh, map look up so we'll initialize this value first and so to do this we're gonna uh, load zero into here huh. it's got my name on it though you see this is this is the this is the other problem with um hmm. this is the other problem with them just taking previews because this isn't my tune this is this is uh mike's tune so here we're just getting getting the uh map 
uh, uh, map data location. So we need to do that to, to actually be able to process the data in the map. Um, and then we need to go through and we need to draw a row. So So we're going to have map tile width as another constant in here and we know this is 20 and we're going to have map tile height which we know is 11. Uh, and I'm going to create a temp temporary variable here so I'm going to call this uh, uh, column counter. I'll just call it column, it should be fine. So to draw a row, we're going to start with the value zero. We're going to store that in map, load a column. So our, our data is the uh, the map data is at the very top of the screen. The other thing we need to know is the screen location, um, which is this bit here. So this is where we're going to change this screen mod stuff here. So. Set screen and color locations. So assuming we start from the very top, we're going to assume that we're always starting from the top left. There is always going to be a zero at, um, in the lower byte for screen mod and for color mod as well. So in these two locations. Now the upper byte is going to be different. So the upper byte is going to be screen RAM. It's going to go there. And D8, which is the upper byte of uh, color RAM. So now we've set our screen targets as well. So now we've got this value, which is our column. Um, we've, we've got the map lookup and the screen and color targets set. We'll actually count this backwards. Um, so we'll, we'll actually work out, um, we'll grab the map tar width and store that in map loader column. So we'll actually count backwards. So, so even though we're going, we're counting down, we're still drawing across the screen that way. It's just we're using this to work out when we've reached the end of the screen and when we need to go on to the next row. Okay. So we need the tile number now and that's where this comes in. So we can do that by loading the Y. Um, actually... Have we got map data? Yeah, we've got it here. Okay. Uh, actually, no, we will count this forwards. I think we'll count it forwards because it's going to make more sense for this. So we're going to load Y with this value. Our loop is actually going to be here. Call this column loop. So we're going to load our, our map column uh, and then we're going to load from the map loader lookup, we're going to load a byte from that location using Y as an offset. So we don't need that tile number there. The tile number is in the accumulator now for that one. So hopefully this should, well, actually we're not going to see anything. I don't think, cause I think the top tile is, oh no, it is. There we go. That's the, yeah. So we're seeing that one there. So that's correct. We've got well, the first tile drawer in place. I've done all these tires in zero page now, and I serve modern codes so games on carts can be created. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do this without zero page. I mean, if we wanted to do it without zero, without um, self modding, we can just use uh, zero page to do it as well. But the thing is, is it makes this routine really kind of messy. And to be honest, 
if you're doing this on the C64, there's no reason to not do self-modding code. Code running from cartridges is kind of rare to say the least. Generally, even a game loaded from cartridge will copy its data into, into RAM anyway. Um, there's really not much point in doing uh, it, it completely without zero page. Not that this is going to be a fast routine anyway, so, but it, it, it you know, you can do it both ways, it's fine. But I'll leave that as an exercise for somebody else if they want to change this into um, zero page, it's perfectly fine to do it that way. Um, uh, okay, so we're drawing one tile, and then when we get to, when we finish drawing the tile, uh, we get to this point now. So tile is now drawn. So the first thing we need to do if the tile is drawn is we need to um, advance the uh, this this thing along a bit. So we're gonna we'll do it with the Y register. I think it's fine to do it on here. Increase uh, Y, and we're gonna compare that to. Uh, map tile width uh, and if it is equal jump to next row which will be down here otherwise we can store that back in map loader column here and we move on to the next tile. Now, obviously we need to increment these screen mod locations and the color mod locations. So that's the next job. So to increment the screen and color locations, the only thing we need to increment is um, the tile width. We're, we're not moving on to a new row. We're just setting the, the top left corner of each tile. So we'll do that by um, take our screen mod plus one. This is our uh, low byte, and we'll add uh, tile width. Here we go. We store that here. Um, we can we can cheap out a little bit here uh, and just do this. It just makes the routine ever so slightly quicker um, when you're when you're not going over. Not by a lot, but it does does help um, because we're only ever adding um, an, an eight bit number. It doesn't really matter if we do it this way or not. Oops. And then when we're finished here, we can jump to, uh, where was it, column loop here. Now I notice actually um, that we're doing this value in Y here, and then we're never changing Y, so we can probably get rid of this line here, as long as we do this here. So instead of loading it every time, we just transfer it to the Y the first time, and then the rest of the time, uh, it's just it's already calculated here. So okay, so if we do this now, we should get the whole top row in place now with colours. Go. Let's compare that to the map that we've got, and it does indeed look correct. So that's good. And really, it's not that much difficult to extend this now. So basically, we would just need to do to go into a new row. What we need to do first of all, um, the map data. We're, at the moment, we're just assuming all the map data is consecutive. We'll 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 add some more if we've got time. We'll add some more. Um, steps into to advance through that um, so we don't actually need to to um... oh we do need to change this actually yeah we do need to change this location okay that's fine so what we need to do is we need to take um, this tile location now and we need to add the tile width to it so the map tile width and this is because our tile lookup is 
starting in the top left corner and then we use a y index to go all the way across then when we move on to the next row we obviously need to change where this base index is and that's the the, the number of tiles across the screen so that's the tile width here um, now i'm going to use a, a full 16-bit addition here because um when we actually add extra screens onto it we might need to do uh, a larger than 16-bit uh, addition here as well so um okay cool so this will advance uh the map data pointer um the the tile lookup kind of pointer now we need to move the uh screen pointer along um if you are using tiles that are um As, as best to explain. If you're using tiles that are that divide into 40, then you actually don't need to do anything here. But we're gonna we're gonna do this based on a tile map that might not necessarily um, be be two by two. So what we need to do is we need to um, make sure that we increment screen mod and color mod by uh, another value here. So the value is going to be zero for a two by two map. So I'll, I'll do some explanations as I go along, so that will already be clear here. So this is um, increase the map loader lookup to next row. Oh, we do need to. We will need to add some stuff to here anyway. Okay, so what do we need to add here? So we need to add enough data to get onto the next row. So the amount of data we need to add is gonna be as follows. Um, if we look at uh, the, t the tile height, that tells us how many rows we need to skip for each, each one. Now we should already have skipped one row or almost a row. So we need to add anything extra uh, what you need to minus one from that. So we've already, as I say, we've already completely skipped one row. But if we're using three by three tiles, we'll be at position 39 and not position 40. 40 would be on the next row, which is what a two by two tile will take us to. So therefore, we only need to add this extra height here. Um, if we've got to 39, however, we're going to have to add something extra. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to get uh, map tile width times. Uh, tile width and it's going to be 40 minus those values uh, which actually doesn't need brackets around it but i will put that in brackets uh, so this will make sure we always add at least enough to get onto the next row that will go in here like so um and that should be fine. I'm going to put this in a constant or up here or a var up here, actually. Yeah, and that will be constant, so I can, can do that there. And then I need to do the same with... Oops. I need to do the same with color as well. What is this? Mary had a little blam. Okay. So the only other thing we need to do is uh, make sure we set this value as well. So we'll do exactly the same as we've done up here. Uh, we'll call this uh, row loop here now because we need to reset that value every time. Uh, but then above here. <laughs> Somebody found a proper version of this sound. Everything it does on YouTube because it will need to unwatch 
to follow it all. <laughs> well, hopefully the, the whole point of this is it will be, if, if you want to try and figure it out, I'm hoping you can watch the stream and figure it out. Um, but if you just want to use it, I'm hoping this will be a, a, a fairly uh, useful, reusable um, file to do just that um, with any kind of size tiles. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so we need to we need to do the same thing we did with the map row here, uh, but we need to do it with columns. But we'll do it here because we don't need to do everything uh, if we've already done it, and I'll have row rows complete here, and this will jump back to uh, column loop. No, sorry, row loop. So we'll, we'll test this out in a second. Uh, map loader row. Did I actually call that map loader row? Please say I did. Uh, there we go, map loader row. Oh, where's the code? Here it is. And we compare with height. And rows complete. There we go. Right, so hopefully now this should draw the entire map. And then we'll try it out on some. Uh, oh. Map loader row. Did I not call that map loader row? Oh, I didn't actually create a map loader row. There we go. Uh, no, something has gone horribly wrong there. Uh, it's not advanced enough, that's the problem. Okay, so we've not advanced the screen enough on each row. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint in uh, here so I can see what it's actually trying to do. Because I, I think this screen advance is probably wrong, that's all. Uh, oh, it's this, there we go. So this calculation, I, I'll do an explanation of what's going on here. So. Let's put that one first. So this first section here is how many extra characters there are left at the end of the screen. So we're taking the, the, the width of the screen in tiles, in our case 20, times it by the tile width, which is 2, which gives us 40, and we're taking that away from 40. So we know there's no extra characters at the end of the screen. With a 3x3 three three tile, however, um, you would have a tile width of 13 and a tile width of 3, which would give you 39, which would give you, taken away from 40, would give you 1, which would say there's one extra character at the end of the screen. The second part is, given that the first row of tiles is complete, how many more rows need to be skipped uh, for the tiles? So that will be, in a 2x2 two two tile, uh, if you skip the first row, there's just one row of tiles left. So tile height minus 1. 2 minus 1 gives you 1. With a 3x3 three three tile, take the first row out, you've got 2 tiles left. And then times that by 40 to give you how many characters you need to skip. So hopefully this should work fine now. No, not quite. And also we've not advanced the map properly, I don't think. Um, why haven't we advanced the map? Right. It seems to be drawing all the way down the screen correctly. It's just it's bringing the wrong data in. So let's go and check the data that it's grabbing. So this is this bit here. Uh, map loader. To, oh no, not tile lookup. Tile lookup is the wrong thing. Map lookup is what we want. That's why it's wrong. That's why it's wrong. Uh, okay, almost there. It's just offset by one tile. So why is it offset by one tile? Is it the screen that's wrong? I'm gonna clear the carry bit there just in case it's doing that. I can't see that being the problem, but. Okay, yeah, so it's just off by one character all the way down the screen for some reason. 
Uh, also, the colours seem wrong in places, like here, here. Which makes me think that it's actually drawing, it's actually doing the screen update incorrectly, but the, the, the colour update correctly. Let's have a look. Let's put a clear coat bit there. I'm a bit intrigued as to why that's doing that, but uh... okay, that's still not right though, is it? Okay. Okay, let's um, let's put some breakpoints in and see what the values are. So let's have a look. Uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. Let's see what we get. I want to see what that screen advance value is. Okay, so it's saying add 28, so that is the correct uh, screen advance value, that's what we'd expect. Um, nah, it's, oh, I know why, I know why. So we are doing a check uh, here uh, to see if we need to advance. We should always let the screen advance here, so actually this needs to go. here we always need to let the horizontal advance all the time uh, which means I can probably get rid of these clear carry bits here because the carry should be clear at this point and there we go um, yeah, the colours are all fine, everything looks good, cool. Okay, so with that in mind, let's try this routine out now with a 3x3 three three, uh, map. So if we load in a completely different map now, um, or let's try... There isn't a 3x3 three three in here, okay, let's try... Let's go and have a look in another folder, see if there's... Oops, uh... Okay, there are no 3x3s, three three. let's do a Miami Monsterland then. Okay, so Miami Monsterland is 4x4, four four, so let's pick a, a, a nice location. Let's pick a happy one. I don't like this. There we go. And let's just pick somewhere in the middle. Let's do let's do this bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy this. And then I'm gonna reduce it to uh ten wide. There we go, right. So now our map is using a uh, 4x4. Four four. Um, and it's now 10x6. So let's save all these things out. So let's export our character set. Uh, in fact, let me create a new folder in here. Oh, crap. I forgot what I'm saving there, so let me... Character set, okay. So we'll save out... Charles in here. And colours... So in here. Oh, I've got import. Oh, that was that. I don't know what that was. I'm going to export the tile set. And then we'll export the map. So now we're just doing single screen maps. Um, I will do some more code probably after my next break to, uh, to make this work with... Uh, 
uh, to make this work with multiple screen maps we can work out position across the screen as well okay so let's give that a try so we're going to see some weirdness because it's going to be in high res mode the colors are all going to be wrong but we should hopefully get a, a working map display here uh okay so we've got okay so we've got a tile map problem here uh that's fine we can move this map up a little bit and we just have to change the properties in here as we do need to change the properties anyway so our map data is at three four now the tiles are four by four and the map is 10 by 6. Uh, something seems off there as well. Let me put the multicolor mode in. Let's do that first. And set the colors correctly. So, multicolor mode is uh, bit 4 of D016. So, we just turn that on. So, should hopefully give us multicolor mode, which it does. Yeah, things seem... Actually, what's going on there? It looks... It's wrong, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it's missing one of the tiles or something. We'll have a look at why it's doing that in a second. Let's set the colours, so... We've got pink and brown, so... I remember which is brown. Brown is... Okay. I'm almost certainly going to get these the wrong way around. Yeah, it's like some of the colour attributes around. So the, it looks like the tiles are drawing kind of correctly, but there's some... No, there's something a little wrong there, isn't there? It's a colours thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a per character colouring method. Okay, let's try exploring the characters. Colours again. Maybe there's an overlap in the colours as well. I don't think there is though. Interesting. Trying to figure out why we're seeing maybe maybe there's something wrong with the color advance routine. Let's go and have a look. Ah, yes, there is. It's because um, we're doing this increase here, so actually this does need a clear character there. Hopefully that should fix the issue now. Cool, perfect. So there you go, so we've got a system that will load any kind of size tiles into the screen, uh, given that your screen tops in, starts in this top top corner here. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take a quick break, guys. Uh, when I come back, we'll, um, we'll extend this, we'll use the Mayhem and we'll extend it so that it works um, at any given screen location so you'll be you'll give a uh, a horizontal offset into your map and then a vertical offset into your map so it starts at that location um all right back in um back in about five minutes guys bro back and i'm back <laughs> Just catching up on the chat a bit. Yep, 
Yeah, this is C64. Does my uh, but my stream info still says Game okay, Boy? Hang on. Uh, uh, I'm just going to change it to Let's Make a Game because I I alternate on on Tuesdays. I do uh, Game Boy Color on. Uh, Thursdays and uh, Saturdays I do Commodore 64. But welcome to the stream, Creepy Dead Boy. It's a funny name. <laughs> okay, let's let's make some additional stuff in here now. So at the moment we're just drawing a single map, right? So we're just drawing uh, a single screen like so. But what I want to do is have it so we've got a whole map like this and we can draw any part of this map now. Um, again, this is just for flick screens. If you're doing a scroller, you would do this very differently. Um, we'll go through tile-based tile scrollers at some point in the near future. But for now, we'll just do this based on, on single screen. So I'm going to export this map now. The tile set is the same, the character set is the same, but the map is going to be very different. And so this map is 242 wide. Uh, so we're going to create some new constants in here. So full width and full height. So this is the size. So this is the size of a single screen. And this is going to be the full map size. So the first thing to note is when we run this, oh, it's weird this. We're not going to get a neat map like this what we're going to get is we're going to get one row repeated because what's happening here if we look at the map it's drawing first 10 tiles and then on the next row it's drawing the next 10 tiles it's not jumping down in memory and so that's our next step that we need to do here so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to we're going to work with um, this value here to work out how far we need to skip the map data along. Which is here when we do this. Uh, so we're just adding map tile width here, but what we actually need to add now is. Um, full width here. And that should be enough to give us a single screen, but it's only going to give us the first screen. So it's going to give us this bit here. So what if we want to draw a few tiles across from there? So what we can do at the beginning here when we call draw map we'll pass in some values we'll pass them in x and y because that makes sense um, so we'll just deal with X first, we'll deal with Y seconds. Y is going to be the position vertically on the screen. Oh, I just thought of a tune I want to put on, so I'm going to, I'm going to cue a tune. I know I've played this a few times. Somebody requested this the other day, and it's one of my favourite SID tunes now. I don't know how many is in the list, but...
This comes up a lot as well, actually. Is it UDMX? Yeah, it's a brilliant tune. It's one of my favourites. Thank you for always streaming this. You're welcome, oh sick boy. Hopefully it's useful to you. Hopefully this file will be something that you can either dig into and try and understand, or you can just use it by changing these values in here. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, before we draw the map, we're going to, I'm going to say we want you to. I want you to draw um, from this position here. So this is 42 according to this. So we're going to put the value 42 into here, which is QA and X. So in order for this to work, what we need to do is in our map look up here, um, we now need to actually. Um, we need to add these values. And so what I'm going to do is uh, Oh, actually, I can just transfer Y to the accumulator there. I don't need to do anything. So that should be enough. Because all we're doing is we're saying, OK, the map lookup actually starts over here, not, not at zero. there we go we've got it drawing so now we can draw at any position along here uh, now the map drawing code is quite slow I mean this is not gonna be done uh, at any speed in fact let's let's put um, let's put this into the loop here and we'll set a uh, we'll, we'll do some border increments here so you can see just how slow this is going to be this is why it's no good for a scroller at all you can see it's overlapping there's there's more than one screen's worth of um, processing here so if we were to uh, do something like this uh, let's just put a temporary variable here. You'll see this is far too slow for us to actually create a proper scroller. Although it does scroll, it's you can see glitching where it's, it's doing, but you, you get the idea. It's going to be too slow for doing a, a proper scroller. Um, but it's perfect for doing uh, uh, perfect for doing uh, flick screen games. So let me just undo that code because this is I'm only doing this for flick screen. We'll do we'll probably do a separate um, a separate stream where we do the same thing for A, a separate stream where we do uh, tile scrolling as well because there's some there's some kind of tricks to doing tile scrolling <laughs> the Jedi Master so it just thinks code and it appears I wish I was did I wish I could just think of stuff and it appear on the screen that'd be great okay so the last thing we need to try and do is a map that um, let's open another project a map that scrolls in all directions. So Turrican is a really good one for this. Um, so let's take a Turrican map. So you can see with the Turrican map, it scrolls in all directions. Um, and it's a big map. But this will allow us to test, uh, as well as X, test the Y as well. So let's put the details in for this. Uh, well, first of all, let's export things. So, so let's export the character set. In fact, let's save those out. Oops. Let's just do it in the folder. It's a bit easier, isn't it? Okay. 
Okay. So save the characters out. Save the characters at attributes out. I think that was tiles. I'm going to save it again because I'm not sure if I press the right one. One thing I wish it would do is tell you up here what you're saving out and then you can double check before you press save. Now the map is going to be huge but this should still work the same way. So if I just compile this now I mean we're going to get all sorts of weird glitches but I just want to see how much memory it's taking up. Actually, the map isn't taking that much much memory up. It's it's only uh, it's only about eight k, so it's not too bad. Um, all right, let's get the colours in correct. So let's go back to this bit. So these are our colours. Uh, so let's have a look. We've got uh, light blue, um, and kind of medium grey, and brown. So the brown stays the same. This becomes medium grey. This becomes light blue. And then we need to set these values. So tile width and tile height are the same. We haven't changed the location of any of these these things here. Um, I'm going to actually put these next to um, here so you can see what they are. Uh, so our map is so a single screen is going to be 10 by 6 again, that can stay the same, that's fine. Um, but our map dimensions are different, so our map dimensions are 163 by 50. So we should see now that we can display um, part of the top row of the map. So somewhere up here we can display, no problem. Um, so if I come to here, for instance, uh, I set this to this size and I want to display that part of the screen for instance this is an X position of 146 uh, which is 146 would be uh, 9 to this tune doesn't seem to be playing at all I don't know if it's really quiet yeah I'll skip this one yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. What is this one? Okay, so let's give that a try. Hopefully we should see the map drawn that position it, there we go so we've got the map drawn exactly as I wanted at this location here um, let's make it a bit bigger so that's fine that's perfect that's what we wanted obviously it's missing the bottom row here because it's just drawing whole tiles now with a flick screen you would draw a, a single screen to be whole tiles with a scroller it's a little bit different with a scroller you would draw partial um, around the edges um, but again, I'll, I'll talk about this. I, I need to do another one in the scrolling um, uh, scrolling series, so I might do a horizontal uh, shoot 'em up scroller. Um, so just displaying a simple tile-based scroller, um, but showing you how to how to draw the screen, how to shift it, and how to actually do it quick enough that you can do it all within one frame. Um, and that's the way you do that is by basically just drawing uh, down one side. Uh, the side that you're 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 changing basically um the the side that's being filled with blanks basically as you shift it so okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the um uh, if we pass a y offset in so let's let's pick a crazy y offset in here so let's go and let's have a look at the map um let's get the little dude where is he Near somewhere. Where is he? Yeah, let's get this guy. 
So we're going to try and try and uh, get this guy's head on screen like that. So this is at ninety two seventeen. So now we're getting a, we're getting into kind of slightly trickier areas now. So ninety two. Um, oh, actually, I put it in Y. This should be X. Okay. So that's the first thing to do. We need to go and change that to transfer X, not Y. Okay. Uh, so that's ninety two. Sorry, that's ninety two. Uh, what was it 92.17 so our y is going to become 1.1 one, one. so if I run this now what we're going to get is we're going to get the top of this so we're going to get this screen so let's just check that that's the case just to confirm that it's working and then we'll implement the, the y shift so yeah we've got this top part here it matches up with this that's correct but what we want to do is we want to shift it down to this so that's actually quite simple to do um, we basically we, we're going to need to store the X and restore it at some point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it here push it onto the accumulator and then I'm going to pull it from the accumulator here so that's going to ensure that this part works now <coughs> The, the trick here is we need to take the value that's in the Y register uh, and we're going to store that in our multiplier and we're going to store that there and we're going to multiply it by uh, full width. So we're going to take the map full width value and we're going to store that in multiplier number two and then we're going to jump to our multiply routine. So remember the multiply routine is going to give us, where is it? It's going to give us a low byte in A, high byte in Y. So now what we do is we, uh, that's the beginning. Actually, we can, we can do this. If we do this first, like so then the value that we've got left over um, we can add to these values so uh, we what was it low value in accumulator um, low value low in accumulator high in white okay so the accumulator now contains the low value for our um, calculation So it's already the accumulate is already there, so we'll just clear the carry bit and we're just gonna add it to this value here. Now we can um, transfer Y to the accumulator because Y is the high byte and add that to the top. Alright. And there we go. That should add it to the map load and lookup. So with a bit of luck now, when we run this, we should get um, the top half of the bloke. And there we go. Perfect. So that's pretty much all you need to be able to draw, given any piece of map data, like so. So this is the this is the problem that Hayes had. He's got a map that's very much like this. He's got um, a huge map. Or maybe not this big but he, he has a map that um, has lots of screens kind of together and he needs to be able to display from any part of the map so this routine will now allow him to do it so you, you give an X and a Y so let's let's try it again let's let's pick another location um, so let's try and draw this section here so let's squash it down to one screen let's have a look right we want to draw this so this location is 1926. So change this to 19, so it's 13, and this to 26, which is 1A. And then when we run this. <laughs> and Hayes, Hayes work, woke up. And there you go, we, we, we're drawing that section of the map now. So that's a, that, that map loading now will allow you to have an arbitrary map size. Um, uh, I will have to put a little caveat in here. Uh, 
cannot exceed. And the reason for that is because we're doing 8-bit uh, multiplication and we're doing uh, an 8-bit addition in there as well. So we need to be we need to be careful. But I think that should be should be enough for most people. I mean, you look at the map, the size of a Toraka map; it's huge. Um, and this is only uh, what's the size? 163 tiles by by 50. So you would do well to to have to exceed 256. Let's let's try let's try a different map. Let's see if we can get it working on a different map. So let's uh, let's load a different game. Let's try um, oh, Navy Seals. That's a good one. So Navy Seals is uh, two by two. So let's load the map in. Navy Seals, yeah, thanks him for the bits, Ace. Appreciate it, dude. Okay, so let's go through it again. So we're going to export the character set. Um, let me put these into. Okay, so character data, Charles. Character set attributes, calls. Oops. Tile set tiles. And map. There we go. Right, and our map is 40 by 72, so we put our map size in here. Tiles are two by two, so we'll make the screen 20 by 11 tiles, or 12 tiles, uh, and our tiles are two by two. Oh. <laughs> this is pretty good, good version. Okay, let's pick somewhere to go on the map. So let's uh, let's try and draw this room here. So that is at location 0, 060. Let's, let's pick somewhere a bit more kind of offset. Let's let's do let's try and draw that. Okay, so that's ten and sixty. So ten is O A, sixty is three C. And the only other thing we need to do is the colours. So our background is black, and then we've got medium grey, dark grey. So black, medium grey, dark grey. Okay. Parasol stars. I love this tube. And there we go, we've got that map drawing at that location. So, as soon as you're there, Hayes, I guess this is kind of what you need, right? It's it's a way for you to be able to pass in a, a, a kind of coordinate, a top left coordinate for your map. <laughs> Remember, it's still going to get a parasol stars, don't you worry. I've already decided what I'm going to do. So when the Saturday game is finished, I'm going to start doing parasol stars on stream. Um, and I'm going to make it kind of a collaborative effort. So I kind of going to get people to help me with the graphics um, and the music uh, code. I'm not going to share the code because I do not want people to to release the game. Uh, so there'll be no flu bits for it and there'll be no um, no GitHub shared for it. Um, but I will gladly accept people helping out with the with the graphics and audio as well. Um, I've already spoken to to um, to him about that uh, that audio. Um, he said he can supply that um, as it is and, and, and change it as I need to. So that I may use that version. Yeah. That's my alibi tune been on. Or have I missed that as well? I did. I missed it, didn't I? God damn it! Yeah, that version is three channels, so... Um... 
can you recommend me a book on assembly? I've been reading the art of assembly language, but it's boring to me because I know it's more of a manual for each day. Um, well, I can I can force that tune any time I want. I'm going to force it actually, so it becomes the next tune. I'm going to do that now. Uh, you can check out my. Um, it depends if you want to learn six five zero two for the C sixty four, then check out my patron um, because you can for like. I think it's two dollars or something it's like the minimum amount you you pay um ha 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 that admin yeah there you go you go there there's there's about five or six pdfs i think that that should give you a, enough to kind of get going um on 6502 for the c64 there's also Derek Morrissey's book as well, uh, which I've been told is pretty good. I, I've not seen very much of it. Um, and then there's lots of blogs as well. I am t I am a lots of PDFs behind. However, the PDFs that are there do contain pretty much everything you need to learn all the instructions in assembly and understand how they work. Um, so it's not like it's... Uh, while, while the actual the game is incomplete at that point, there is enough in there to understand how... Uh, how the instructions work and hopefully get a good idea of it and for two dollars you can't apparently argue and you're welcome to download them and then cancel your patron I, I really i'm not bothered at all but just do know if you do stick with the patron all the money that i make on patron will be going into giveaways uh live on stream on saturdays once a month and uh, the next one is going to be a commodore 64 with a raspberry pi inside it uh, so well a commodore 64 shell with a raspberry pi inside it so I don't know why the Discord command didn't work there. Oh, there you go. It's a slow. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. So you can you can take this file now. Uh, you can import it, and as long as you supply these values um, in zero page, which I, I should probably. In fact, I'm going to put a note at the top of the map loader. So as long as you have these values in zero page, uh, then you should be able to just change these constants here. Uh, and based on the data that you're providing, like where it resides in memory, how big your tiles are, how big you want one single screen to be, and how big the actual map you're importing is. And then you should just be able to draw any part of the map by supplying an X and a Y and calling draw map. Um, I think that's about it, isn't it, really? I kind of want to try another map, though, because... What's the most exciting looking map on here? Uh, okay, so this won't work because it's 8x8, so the, the the size is 6x6 is the biggest we're going to be able to do. Let's try a 5x5, five five. so we've got parallax in here. Let's do, let's do parallax. Do you have to use tiles? What well, the disadvantages is for not using them. So, using tiles slows the map draw down because you have to kind of look up tile data as well. It's an extra step in drawing it, so it is a bit slower. Um, however, um, tiles greatly increase the amount of memory you have available. Um, so, if you imagine that Turrican map that we had on before, that was using eight kilobytes, but that was using eight kilobytes with four by four tiles. So if you were to um, not use tiles to draw that, then that same map would actually be 128 kilobytes or something. It would be massive. Um, so you do kind of need... Um, oh, interesting. Jason Page did a Turrican port. Interesting. This tune is brilliant. Sorry, I need to knock this up ever so slightly because I like this.
this is good. Uh, yeah, so using tiles, basically, you, you can represent um, larger portions of the map with a single byte. Um, so, I mean, take this for instance, right? So this map is, uh, the tiles are 5x5, five five, and this map is 96x96. So if I export this map, let's just call it, uh, I'm going to call it map tiles. So that's exported. Now I'm going to turn the tile system off. And you see the map is the same, it's the same map. no tiles and if we go and have a look at those you'll see the difference so with tiles it's nine kilobytes with no tiles it's 225 kilobytes so tiles are necessary if you want to have big maps and you want to fit them into memory um, you're not going to be able to fit this map into memory without tiles uh, the other advantage um, of not using tiles so an advantage rather than disadvantage of not using tiles is you can have much more detail in it so I can do this quite easily and I don't have to create a tile for each one of these sections. Um, but generally, you can get a lot of detail in tiles because the number of tiles you have is also unlimited as well. Um, it's only limited by memory. So if we look at um, Turrican, for instance, so this map would have been 16 times the size. So it would have been 128 kilobytes, this map. Um, but the tiles are only three kilobytes. So you could extend the tiles to even more and you could create even more kind of variations of the tiles um, and you would still be well within uh, the, 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 uh, the memory limitations. <laughs> oh, just a little note, if you do pick a tune and the main tune is not the first subtune, you will have to put a hash and the number on the end. Um, so I'll give you an example. In fact, there is an example when you pick as well, but I'll, I'll show you. So if I want uh, a different subtune, I have to do something like this. I have to put the little hash and a number on the end, and it will pick a different subtune. Thank you for the follow, Mad Scientist. I missed that one. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, they're all listed on DeepSid. Oh, Hayes, trust me. I, I tried to make it as simple as possible. You should have seen the first iteration of it. It was, um, it was not great. <laughs> um, but if you go to DeepSid, um, find a tune that you want. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate how to, the easiest way to get exactly the tune that you want. So go to Deep Sid, pick a tune that you want. I don't know why it always goes to fame, but it really does. All right, so say I want, um, I don't know, uh, what's a good tune? Say I want Commando, right? So I search for Commando, I'm gonna get loads of tunes. So I find the exact version that I want, which I know is Hubbard, so I'm gonna find it in here. this is the one I want here so when I click this it basically adds a path up here you can see this path it's probably kind of hard to see but if you just copy that path it's set for the first slash and then redeem that so like that that will absolutely find the right tune otherwise what it tries to do it tries to do a best match it tries to find the tune that best matches what you've typed in and the algorithm for that is tricky to say the least because there's 50,000, over 50,000 tunes. So it's difficult to get the right tune. I've tried to do my best to to extract the right data and to tag the tag the tunes properly, but um, this is as close as I could get it, so. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, 
so one of the things it does haze is a fuzzy search so it will try to find the all the characters that you've included in that order even if there's gaps between them um and so what that means is in the case of your tune there it found bo somewhere then double l and then ocks somewhere else um, and because it didn't find the tune with the actual word bollocks in that became the closest uh the closest match Also, it will remember the tunes as well. So I am going to end the stream at half 12. I'm, I'm sorry, I was going to play Last of Us 2 tonight. I did say I was going to play, but I'm still not feeling great, to be honest. I need to sleep. Um, so we'll, we'll play it again uh, next week. Um, but any tunes that are... <laughs> See, I have no idea what it would have found then, but it certainly would have found Creatures 3, that's for sure. Let's have a look, what did it find? Oh, it didn't find anything. This is the other thing as well, is is if you put too much in, and it doesn't find an exact match, um, then it's just going to eat your points. Oh, it wasn't a redeem. Oh, yeah, okay, so I've seen it in between redeems, so... I've tried to reduce the chance of that actually happening, so it shouldn't happen. Um, he's making ever waste points on Sid. Oh, he does. He does. <laughs> he really does. Um, okay, I think this is. I think this is pretty good. I'm going to delete those. Those two. Uh, Oh, it has already deleted those two extra files, fair enough. So the other thing I've considered as well, um, and I've definitely got the tools set up to do this now, is having it automatically uh, play the tunes on the ultimate. I can definitely do it. Um, so it wouldn't be playing through the web player, it'd actually be playing through the ultimate. Should be kind of cool. Actually, I want to try something. So, I'm just going to turn the ultimate on. So I have. Uh, I'm going to do this now. Let me grab it from Saturday game. Maybe I didn't okay. check the make file. So I, I mentioned this last time that I found this great little um, tool that allows you to um, launch stuff directly on your ultimate from your builds, uh, which is this thing here, uh, U64 remote. So let me try it with this, because in theory this should work. Let me bring my ultimate up, see if I can make a little uh, audio, no, video capture device. Here we go, add existing, have a media. No, as usual, the freaking capture device doesn't want to work. There we go, right. Oh, let's just grab. Just to demonstrate this, so what I can do is once I've got the make file set up, I can just press F8 and it launches on the ultimate. So that's running through the ultimate there. 
which is just an awesome thing to be able to do. So it makes a hell of a difference in testing things. So we may see more of this kind of live testing on the Ultimate at some point. Maybe I'll, I'll kind of drop it down here or something in some streams. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a perfectly valid way now to, to test things, which is nice. Basic buy points for request there. <laughs> also need to find something else to spend them on. I'm hoping uh, over the next week or two I can start adding some proper gambling games in as well. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I mean, obviously I want to do Shimmer Shillings, um, but I want to make it part of this overlay as well. I need to figure. I've tried to make this overlay so there's a bit more room for stuff, um, so I can easily kind of pop something up over this if I need to. I've got some room up here if I need to do stuff, and this camera as well can be replaced at any time. So. Kind of like how Chiz has his poker appear in this window here. It'd be something similar to that, I think. Same as Hayes, actually. Hayes has his uh, slots down there as well. Uh, okay, is there anything anybody would like me to add to the map loader before we before we end the stream? I think it pretty much contains the things we need it to. Uh, Antonio Serena says, don't use tiles. You can pack the data better yourself with a script. Uh, I would disagree with that. It depends on the size of your map. If you're doing a Turrican map, then no, tiles are going to be better. Because then you can also pack the tile data. Um, if you're doing... Uh, if you're doing... Yeah, I, I, I mean... Hmm. It depends. It depends how you... Um, how big your maps are and things like that. So, I mean, honestly, how big are your maps, Hayes? Oh, yeah, f for not scrolling games. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see, I would like to see proof of that on a, on a big game with many, many screens. Um, he might, he may be right, but, um, I think when it comes to the logic for displaying something on screen for beginners, I definitely would recommend going down tiles. Don't try packing the data yourself because you're just going to get into a whole world of hurt trying to work out how, how compression routines work in Commodore 64. Um, but by all means, if you have the libraries to do it, then do it. But um, um, but saying that, if that was the case, we do still have Abby Damore, which is tile-based and was written by him. So. I'm not sure. I'd like to, I'd like to see it. Um, I'd like to see how it's done. It kind of depends on um, what you're doing. But you, the the thing to think about, right, is if you even if you made this uh, fully out of individual characters, right, and compressed them your own way, all you're doing by making tiles is 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 doing some compression anyway. It's your own compression, right? The tile data can then be compressed again on top of that. So. So you could take something like this, right, um, and compress the data from this and get a very small file, or you could take the non-tiled version and compress that, and it would I think it would probably be maybe about the same, uh, maybe a bit bigger, I don't know. It depends, it depends on a lot of things. I, I would, yeah, test, test your... Um, particular scenario um, there's a reason why why tiles are used in most games and that's because it's simple to understand it's it's flexible enough that it, it creates decent compression um, if you need more compression then by all means look into into better versions but I'm not saying what he's doing is wrong because it's it's probably not I'm sure it is smaller he wouldn't say it's smaller if it's not but um, it, it yeah it's gonna make it a lot harder to maintain so 
and might not always give you the best results as well. Tiles are going to be good because tiles have got a one level of compression just by using tiles. Then the actual data you output can be compressed as well. So for instance, this run of um, you know blank tiles here would be compressed very well, um, even though it's just tiles. It would you know it's there's it, two levels of compression going on with tiles. So. Um, right, I think I'm going to call it a night there, actually, guys. Uh, let me find someone to go and have a raid. Uh, oh, Simileos. He raided us last time, so I think we should go and raid him. He made it to the end of the stream. Well done. Well done. I, I I'll share this uh, straight after um, the, the stream as well. If anybody's got any questions about how to use it, please feel free to poke me in Discord or somebody in Discord. I'm sure everyone's willing to help. Um, and hopefully, Hayes, this, this does what you need. If you want to use it, by all means use it. Um, if not, then whatever. It's, it's, a useful, it's a useful kind of library, I think, for everybody. So, okay, let's... going to pause the, the SID music now and hopefully the SID music will carry on on the next stream so we shall see if it works we've got I don't know how many we've got left in the queue uh, we've got six left in the queue so hopefully on the next stream they will just start from those six tunes um, okay cool let's go and raid um, Simuleos then uh, thanks for joining along tonight guys and I shall see you all on Saturday Take care and see you then. Bye.